Um, I think real change can only be um, effective when those in power become uh, better and active allies. Um, but academia is a profession that uses a language that you know promotes the best. You need to be world leading, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that makes people selfish, drawing them into the cycle. For example, publish or perish. And I don't think people are being selfish deliberately wise. It's just that you know that is the encouragement that we're being given um, uh, from an early, early age. And you need to like sort of knuckle down all the time, you know, be your best. And I think those kind of uh, descriptive terms are end up actually being sort of uh, quite discriminatory, um, especially for people who are minority in, in any one particular uh, discipline. Um, I think the only way uh, to get over this, um, to, you know, uh, is, is to substitute the vanity of academia, um, I think with a desire to make it a place inclusive for everyone, and only then will we see real change. I think it's very important to create an environment that welcomes them. And in order to do that, the allies would play a major role. So. I would say if I'm an ally, I should be an ally in the truest sense, not pretend to be a savior. What's important would be to engage in conversations. For me, for example, I don't mind being asked a question. I would answer them. I would prefer that to being stereotyped. So I think open conversations are key. Know about the scientific work, engage with them in discussion, invite them to present their work, and collaborate with them. And please don't let them be outsider. I think the question is posed is a good one because it's not asking about what can we do to kind of engage more underrepresented groups in science and get them into geoscience, let's say, because I think people are attracted to it and they're just not allowed in. And I think when people get in, they're also then forced out. So your question more relates to that latter bit, right? It's like, how do we make that environment? Well, let's say, I'm not sure exactly if that's how you phrased it, but if you're talking about the environment in which an underrepresented, somebody from an underrepresented group finds themselves rather than they're on the outside looking in. If they're in it already, what can happen? What, what could, what could, what could protect those people and allow them to thrive? I think the institutions need to be a lot more tenacious around, around disciplining people for, um, how do I phrase this? Disciplining people for for breaking the rules, let's just say, right? So if you have some policies in place around racism, around some aspect of discrimination, um, if somebody does something wrong, you need to discipline them for that transgression. And also that needs to be made public to the peop to everybody, right? So there's no point in like sweeping things under the carpet because if you're in that system as an underrepresented as a member of an underrepresented group, then you're unlikely to report anything that's happened to you if you don't believe anything's going to happen as a, as a function of your reporting. Because the only thing you will see is, as that's going to happen from you reporting is you'd be labelled as a troublemaker. The process may, probably you'll think that the, that the process has found in favour of the other person, so it hasn't found in favour of you as the complainant. And you know, round and round we go because then we just we just minimise those experiences and, and people keep them to themselves and therefore the institution believes there's not a problem, right? Because the only way they know there's a problem is if people report it. Um, so I think that's the main thing I would say is I think I've said this before, but like websites, stickers, unconscious bias training, all of these things are kind of good in a, with a small g, but they they're nothing compared to actually enforcing your stated values via a disciplinary process? So first of all, it's uh, creating safe spaces or allowing the creation of safe spaces. And with safe spaces, I mean, not just things like in the classroom with inclusive pronoun usage and things like that, which is all very important, but also things that are spaces that are exclusively for the groups that you protect. Don't be mad if you're not included. So for example, if you have 
a women in earth sciences group um don't be mad if for an event they literally only invite women who are in earth sciences for example because you do talk differently if you're just amongst peers or likewise likewise if there's a trans meet and it's it says it's just for trans people don't be mad that it's not for allies because we do have spaces for allies as well but sometimes we need these protected spaces that are just for ourselves so we can exchange information we can talk to each other and be there for each other Allies are extremely important. I thank everyone from the bottom of my heart who has put time and work into being an ally, especially for trans people at the moment. But yeah, it's, 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 for, it's important for us to have these spaces where we can just be ourselves and be amongst peers. Secondly, and this is a tip mainly for allies as well, speak up even if you aren't in the room. So for example, you hear someone making a racist joke, you hear someone perpetuating transphobic stereotypes, call them out on it, even if there are no black people in the room, even if there are no transgender people in the room, and so on. Call them out on it if you can do it safely. Obviously, I'm aware that if you're a student amongst like senior faculty members, you might not want to because it will um, jeopardize your position. But in general, if you do have the power and if you are amongst peers sort of of the same level, do call things out. And secondly, lobby to get transphobic thinking sort of kicked out of the spotlight and let it be given to actual trans people instead. So instead of sort of championing Opinion piece number 500 by a cisgender person about why trans people are evil and want to abuse everybody Maybe just give the place to an actual trans person instead who can tell you what's re what it's really like being trans And that also leads me to point three very quickly, which is don't just say that you support trans people Don't say it show it and be very aware that we are quite wary of spaces who even those who call themselves LGBT friendly so as a trans person even if a space says Oh, we welcome LGBT people. I am. I do not take that as a show that I will be welcome there because a lot of transphobia comes sometimes from within the queer community as well. So yeah, let your actions speak rather than your words. And then number four is uh, sort of more or less the usual stuff. Things like educate yourselves about issues faced by the different marginalized groups, trans people, dis disabled people, black people, people of color, and so on and so on. Um, Find your own. There are so many resources out there online. Put in the time and the work to read them rather than have ex have everyone explain it to you. Um, lobby for gender neutral toilets. Respect pronouns. Um, diversify your speaker lists. There are lots of great resources out there now, like 500 Career Scientists, the um, Women in Sciences Database, and so on and so on. Um, and most importantly, pay speakers for marginalized groups. As I said, if I'd gotten paid for all the free sort of EDI work and LGBT work that I do, I'd be able to afford a deposit on a house at this point. But alas, I don't. So, yeah. I don't know if it's about safer environment, but, but what strikes me most importantly is creating a space that is welcoming to underrepresented groups. And one absolutely crucial point there is to make make a community that more resembles our students the 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 the, the differences between the diversity of staff and the diversity of our student body is so stark this is in geography at kings but 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 all over higher education in the uk and probably around the world we have a wonderfully diverse student body and the staff composition, for all sorts of historical reasons, does not look the same as our staff, uh, as our student body, and that really needs to be a priority. King's has put in place; it is a priority in their sort of race equality plan and and, and lots of other strategic documents. We've, as a department, we've recently carried out um, a sort of a review of our recruitment practices and we've come up with a set of recommendations with this really at the forefront of our mind is, is how do we create an environment where underrepresented groups feel more welcome. And to me, having those role models, having people that will understand, better understand the lived experiences of our diverse student body, that is, uh, that's that's super important. 